Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here for Social Flight, and today we're going to talk about tire and wheel balancing for general aviation aircraft. You know, I really find it fascinating that with cars, this is just a given that you would have your all your wheels and tires balanced, especially when you're putting new ones on. And yet, it's not something that really is a standard procedure on general aviation aircraft. We just don't see it that much. If you walk around your average GA ramp and take a look at the wheels the, uh, on all the different uh, aircraft that you see, chances are you're not gonna see wheel weights on too many of them because people haven't bothered to go through the process of doing it. And yet it is a very, very important process. Um, certainly there's lots of things that can cause vibration that can do with wear of components or flat spots on tires. And, but most of the time, one of the most important things of just making sure that your tire and wheel is in balance just isn't routinely done. And yet it is a very straightforward procedure and I'm gonna show you how to do that here today. I'm going to be doing it using this McFarlane wheel balancer. It comes in this really beautiful wooden container, uh, something that you can just keep in the shop for years and years to come. And uh, inside of this, the real core of the tool is this 129 balancer. It's this sh solid shaft that then has an extension that comes out of it. It's beautifully milled, laser engraved, and, and is just made to, to make sure you can do a precision job. And we're gonna show you how to use that. And it has this loop at the end on an actual cable. And so I'm gonna take you through the process and show you now what is involved in using this so that you can do it on your own tires. And if you don't wanna do it for yourself, you can go and ask your mechanic and get them to get one of these if they don't have it already and make sure that the next time that you go out, taxi, take off, land, you don't have that shimmy caused by an out of balance wheel and tire. So let's get started and I'll take you through the process. Okay, I'm all set now with this bicycle stand that you can just base, barely see out of frame up here. And I'm gonna use that to actually suspend the tire for this process. Now, it all starts with the tool itself, as we mentioned before. And um, what I'm going to do, again, the tool itself has a couple things I wanna point out. It has this shaft which uh, extends. And if you look closely at the shaft, what you can actually see are these markings. These are inches, but they actually represent accuracy points. When you have it pulled all the way up very high like this, that's its, essentially its least sensitive or least accurate point. When you bring it all the way down towards number five, it gets extremely sensitive, extremely accurate. And so this is how we're actually gonna go about the balance process to make it a little easier to work with and let us determine what accuracy we're okay with. So the first thing we need to do is take this and put it actually into the tire itself. So I have this brand new Michelin Pilot tire. It's a gorgeous tire. I actually love these because they've got so much meat on them. They're gonna last a really, really long time. When you look at the tire, one of the things that you see here is you've got this red dot. The red dot on the tire represents its lightest point. They actually do a quick balance on the tires themselves at Michigan, they put a, uh, at Michelin, they put a red dot on it. That's the lightest point. And you generally line that up with the valve stem point on the tube because that's expected to be the heaviest point of the tube assembly. And to some degree, those will actually cancel each other out. But in many cases, what you'll find is that that is the lightest point that you then need to add weight to when you're doing a static balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna start with the stem up. That's the first part I'm gonna do. And I, all I need to do is feed this cable through um, actually, the first thing I need to do, I want to make sure I do that first, is put the spacer on that fits this particular tire. And uh, again, uh, these come with the spacers uh, from McFarland that'll fit just about you know, any type of wheel you're likely to work on. And then they even have an expansion set of spacers for more unique uh, aircraft wheels to get them to fit. So I've slid this in, brought it down to here, and now I take the second spacer and put that on, this just centers everything. Make sure that it's absolutely perfectly centered um, within, and it's a machine, it's really perfect machine fit. These, uh, these parts are very well manufactured, so I like how easy they go together and um, how well they all work. 
And then once you have that, all we have to do is bring it over here and then essentially hang it from something. And there you go. Now that this is actually in place, what we're looking at is how this cable is centered within the hole at the top of, the, of this. So we start by raising this up, and we're going to start it at the number one level, which you can see here. Bring this so that you can see it. Bring it down exactly to a number one level. This is its least sensitive position and makes it fairly easy for us to uh, start adding weights. Now, the weight that you're actually going to be adding is the same kind of weight that you would use from like a tire uh, company. You can get things from your local tire shop. However, one of the big challenges that we have in balancing aircraft tires is that you have a very small moment arm to work from. What I mean by that is, the radius of the tire, of course, is small. It's a small tire, especially this one, which is a five by five. So nose gear tire gonna be generally your smallest tire. Then, in addition to that, the wheel itself goes all the way in, and we can only put weights on the inner perimeter that essentially uh, is directly perpendicular to the forces as the wheel spins. So what we want in the interest of safety and everything else is we want to make sure that when we adhere this weight, that the weight is actually put in there in a way that as the tire spins, it, it pushes it against the uh, adhesive surface. It wants to stay in place more and more the faster the tire turns. You do not ever want to put a weight somewhere on a side or in any type of means where as it spins up, it could be flung away that's dangerous in many, many ways. And so you never do that. You always put weights in a way that as the tire spins, they get forced more into place and it's a very safe installation. That is extremely important. Now, when you do that, you have a very small space to work from and you have an area that is very close to the center of that spinning axis. In the case of this, you're looking at a distance here between where these can be mounted and the center of the shaft that's maybe two to two and a half inches at most, very, very tight space. That's not much of a moment arm. So uh, it might need a very small amount of weight if it were out at the tire edge to make this balance and much, much more weight early, uh, close to the center. The point of going through all of that is to tell you that you're gonna wanna look online for weights that are fairly tall. These are half ounce weights, as you can see here. They are squares and they're pretty tall. These were just available directly off Amazon. You can get things in many different sources, um, but you generally wanna look for something that's gonna be more weight and higher. And then you can have a variety of them. You can cut them down if needed to get exactly what you want. But um, half, inch, half ounce weights uh, in a square form are generally uh, gonna help you out and do a good job. So we don't want to adhere these on until we have a sense of how it's actually going to work out. So I start by taking some weight, and um, I'll take in this case this group of three, and I'm just going to tuck it in um, where it looks like that's going to start making this balance right. And then as I do that, I can then lower this shaft to get a higher level of accuracy. So I take it from one and I put it down here at let's say three. And then at this point, I can see it's getting more sensitive and it's still kind of pointing that I need more weight. And so I can get some more weight and I have to generally try to test it at this point at pretty much the same location. You have to be really careful because if you let it fall to the edge outside and you're testing, then you're, what you're really getting is wrong because you're, you're allowing it to be at a, a greater moment arm. But if it looks like this generally will work, then what I wanna do is remove the second weight and put that aside, and then take this first weight and take that chance of going and putting it into place. So I'm starting by just wiping the surface down with some alcohol. The goal of this, of course, is just to make sure that everything sticks properly in place. And now I'm going to 
peel the backing away from the weights. And um, as long as you're not really disturbing where, how the, uh, how the stem, how the valve stem uh, fits in here, then you should be okay putting it in a location like this and just pushing it into place. As long as it makes sure that you're not really, again, affecting your access to it, you're not interfering with the cap or how the cap goes on. And keep in mind that these weights are easily removable. Um, so you shouldn't have any problem with that. So those are my weights in place now. It all looks good. I press them into place, and that's good. Now, that's gotten me a little bit, you know, towards the direction of being able to uh, get closer to center. And what I'm actually looking at here is the top of this. So as we look down, what we're looking for here is what is the position of the cable relative to the hole as it goes around inside that. And so it's, it's still wobbling, it's still got some, but it, it clearly needs more in order to work properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off, flip the wheel around, and then we're going to see if we can finish the job on the other side of the wheel. Okay, now as you can see, the cable is still pulling a little bit in this direction. And if I draw a line out from that, essentially it's, it's kind of right around here as to where I need to put some weight. And so again, I'm going to just lay some weight in and see what it actually wants to do if I do that. And this is about as close to the circumference as I can, as I can get. And that looks pretty good, and I can test it a little bit by moving this down even further to a higher accuracy level. So if I go down to like four now, five is the highest level of accuracy. But if I go down to four, it really accentuates what this, where this is, where my imbalance is. And the, one of the challenges that you generally have when doing this is you you don't want to interfere in any way with the future maintenance. So I want to stay away from where these bolts are going to be because I'm going to be taking the wheel on and off. And I can see now like what that actually translates to. And you may want to split weight between an area here and an area over there just to do that. And I can experiment with that, of course. I can go and just take one piece and just see, well, okay, what would happen if I, if I went and decided to, you know, put one over here somewhere. Of course, these don't really want to stand up into, into position very well. Let's see if I can make that happen. And of course, you got very high accuracy when you're down to number four, you're down to number five, something like that. It makes a big difference. And you may want to go and and actually split a weight and instead of doing it like this, change this to a three on this side and put one where I did right over there and see what actually that ends up doing. All right, so that is how you balance a wheel using McFarland's Aircraft Wheel Balancing Tool. It is a great tool. I find it very easy to use, and it makes a significant difference in the vibration that you get through either your main uh, wheels or your nose gear. It can reduce shimmy, can do a whole bunch of other things that really improve the longevity of the aircraft and everything that's attached to it. Don't worry so much about making sure that you try to get to the highest level of sensitivity. That isn't the key. It can be very, very difficult to do that. Anything that just gets you in that general vicinity that is a lot better than where you started will make a big difference in that. So don't worry about that. What is important is to make sure that everything that you're doing, removing the wheel, tire changes, anything that you're doing, including adding weight and balancing is properly done 
and properly documented in your maintenance logbook. And so uh, get some guidance from your AMP, make sure you're properly instructed in how to do it, and then uh, do it as owner maintenance, but properly logged and again, done properly along the way. It just matters that we all uh, do things uh, the right way for our own safety and to stay in line with the federal aviation regulations about maintenance. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. We have tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations, our Fly to Win Challenge where you can win prizes, and every Tuesday evening, and see over my shoulder here, it is Social Flight Live with some of the most inspiring guests from general aviation, space, and beyond. Be sure to check that out. We have some amazing people, and all you have to do to register is just go to socialflightlive.com. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Blue skies.